Welcome to this lesson, which is an introduction to the Global Wind Atlas. After this lesson, you will be able to understand the basics about the Global Wind Atlas methodology, use the Global Wind Atlas to investigate areas of interest, use the download options that the Global Wind Atlas offers, and explain the importance of validation. So how do we actually generate the Global Wind Atlas? How do we make the Global Wind Atlas datasets? What is the Global Wind Atlas methodology? So we use the downscaling model chain, as was explained in the previous lesson. We start with global datasets from reanalysis datasets. And then we move to the mesoscale modeling, where simulations were performed from 2008 to 2017 at three kilometer spacing. And then we move to the microscale modeling, where a calculation is performed every 250 meters. The result of that is wind speed and direction distributions representing the same period, 2008 to 2017. And we end up with the high resolution wind atlas data, which makes up the global wind atlas. The way we disseminate all of that data is through a web page. And when you meet the web page, you'll see this. And what we have here is a panel on the left hand side where you can select different layers of interest. These can be the outputs of the Global Wind Atlas, information about wind energy layers, uh, wind layers, and then we also have information that goes into the modeling, um, the terrain layers, for example. And then we also have validation layers where you can see where we have actually done validation of the Global Wind Atlas. When you select a layer here, you also have the possibility for some of the layers to also select a height of interest. We have the heights 10 meters, 50 meters, 100, 150, and 200 meters. You also see the legend here, which you can also adjust by rescaling. This is a useful feature, which I'll show you in a moment. And then we have an area where you can manage your areas of interest that you're working with using the Global Wind Atlas, and you can also select countries and regions that have pre-calculated analysis performed. And then here we see um, sort of quite typical map tools that you would be familiar with using other map um, platforms. So this illustrates how you can choose different layers um, using the layer selection. So by, by selecting the layers here, you will see the layers appear in the map. This was the feature I mentioned called legend rescaling. And this is a useful feature in many regards. One in particular is if you are displaying the sea depth. So here we see sea depths that are 50 meters or less. And here we see sea depths that are 1,000 meters or less. This is a useful feature because it can tell you about the appropriate technology that may, may be used for offshore wind, whether it was bottom fixed, where you have the foundation on the seabed, which could be used, for example, up to 50 meters depth. Or you can look at it, uh, the sea depths around 1,000 meters and less, which may be appropriate for the um, floating wind technology. Another feature is the display layer value. And this allows you to hover over anywhere of interest and to read the latitude and longitude of the location and the value of the layer you have selected. So the layer and the value is what you've already selected on the left-hand side panel. In this slide, we show you how to search a country of interest. So you can move to this panel and then write, in this case, we're interested in looking at Zambia. And then when you write Zambia there, it will focus on Zambia. So now it will zoom in on the country of Zambia and it will also update this right-hand panel, which gives you some analysis of the whole country. Also notice that this country has this 
green seal with a tick in it. And that means it is one of the validated countries of the Global Wind Atlas. More about that later. So when you've selected a country, you also have the possibility of downloading a lot of different types of data. I'll go through this in a bit more detail in a moment. But when you click download, you can see this banner, uh, plot data, GIS data, print and reports. So that means the Global Wind Atlas is more than just a web interface to some graphical colorful maps, but you can also get data that you can then process and work on your own applications. So for example, plot data means that you can get the actual data that goes into the plotting that is shown on the, on the right hand side and therefore make your own analysis and your own graphics. You can also download the GIS data. So you can put that in your own GIS tools on your own systems and do your own analysis. You can also prepare a layer in the interface and then publish it in a sense by making a print. And this tool allows you to create a poster-like PDF file ready to put into presentations, reports, and so on. And then you can download reports. So if it's a validated country, for example, you can download the validation report that DTU has prepared. And if the country has other types of report that have been published, those will also be available on the report download. Now, the Global Wind Atlas can be used to discover favorable sites because it does the full model chain down to the microscale. We can actually see the favorable sites emerge. And this is one of the really strong features of the Global Wind Atlas. So, for example, when we look at Zambia, we can see that there are some locations with rather low wind speeds and then other locations with higher wind speeds and favorable sites for wind energy. In the Global Wind Atlas, we developed a way to present that to the user. And we do that with this graph, which shows the mean power density against the percentage windiest areas. So what this graph captures is the properties and the statistics of the best areas in the country. So for example, we summarize that with the data for the 10% windiest areas, where we see a mean power density of 233 watts per meter squared and a mean wind speed of 6.42 meters per second at 100 meters height. So actually what we're most interested in for wind energy development is the areas where we have this, uh, this peak in the power density. And we can start to identify it in terms of location um, by looking at the map. So in this slide, I will show you how you can use the Global Wind Atlas to explore more deeply the wind resources in a, at a site. So we're going to look at the Cinder district of Zambia, where there are some nice wind resources. We can use the search field here and write Cinder, and then choose the Cinder district. And then we will get information on the fly, calculations made, looking at the resources in that location. We can get area data, temporal data, and we can also do an energy yield calculation for that site. So to summarize some of those features, for example, we can see how the wind speed variability is over the 10 years of the simulation, where one is the, the mean over the 10 years, and we can see variation of around 2% or 3% during those years. Here we have the wind frequency rows, showing you that the main wind direction is this southeasterly. We can also provide you with the hourly versus monthly wind index, which shows you how the wind resources varies according to month of year and time of day. And you can choose either UTC or the local clock, UTC plus two here in Zambia. So from this, we can actually see that the most of the resources are occurring in the Southern Hemisphere winter and um, overnight. And this is useful when thinking about how to integrate that renewable energy into other energy sources. And you have the possibility to download for further modeling and analysis using the download of the generalized wind climate. 
This is a, a file that can be used in the WASP software, for example. So how much confidence do we have in all of this data? Remember, it is based on this modeling chain. So with our partners, we've been able to do validation of the Global Wind Atlas. And so far, we have six countries and we have 35 sites. And you can find out about those sites uh, by clicking on the validation layers. And you can also even see um, the actual locations where the high quality measurements have been made by, our, by partners. You can even click into them and, and get further details. So for the 35 um, sites so far with the Global Wind Atlas version 3, um, we have these statistics. And summing it up, we see the mean speed, um, wind speed bias is minus 1%. We see the wind speed mean absolute bias is 14%. Now, validation helps us very much because it helps us quantify the confidence level in the data. It can determine the next steps in a country. What should the country do next in its resource assessment? For example, it could be to make a detailed measurement campaign. And it helps us to direct our research and development. Where do we need to improve our model chain? Where do we need to improve our method? What data sets do we need to improve, for example? in order to improve the performance. So in this lesson, you have learnt about the global wind atlas and how it can be used to identify mesoscale and microscale flow effects, explore wind climates and resources, how the global wind atlas can provide analysis at chosen locations, and how to download geospatial and other data sets from the global wind atlas.